Hi everyone, Cinder A9. Welcome back to Let's Play Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky. A few things before we head to the uh, festival, the Genus Row Academy. I gave Estelle the information uh, quartz, which I which was on Joshua. None of her arts changed, and the reason I did that, oh, she also has cast one, and she had cast two. The reason I did this was to give them to Joshua. Joshua now has cast two, EP cut one, in the same vein as Chloe, so arts EP costs 10% less. And then eagle vision to see enemies from a distance. Combining all of those, he got Hellgate, which cost, for him, 27 EP. Stagnates enemies' vital activities. Now, we already know this. However, putting these together, and I've really had to, to go for this, you know, put them in the line and really just have the right quartz in there. But Joshua now knows White Gehenna. Disrupts the space-time continuum. Faint 20% in the same vein as Hellgate. But it has a bigger area, and since it's more expensive... And takes more I assume it's going to be a bigger Hellgate now the thing that interests me is this attack set if you see that down there where it says area medium and it says attack set what I think that means I don't know I haven't casted it is that uh, the attack won't follow the enemy like we've seen that before where we can like get out of the area of an attack I think that's what's gonna happen the attack will be set there and then enemies can move out of the way so that's what I think it means and if that's the case we'll have to be wise on where and when we cast it but I'm hoping for big things from that one last thing I bought a saber for Clo, which is a upgrade to the rapier gives plus more 10 uh, gives 10 more strength Plus, I also gave Clo a uh, Glam Choker, prevents Mute for our uh, caster, I think that's really important, and to prevent Seal, a Pearl Earring. So there we go. I bought both of those for her. Oh, I didn't, because I didn't say that. I bought an accessory for Joshua, but uh, we'll move on. So from here, we're going to head to the Genus Royal Academy, which is this way. Since we've completed all the little side side quests, though they're not really little, we've completed just all the side quests. And now we can move on. And see what exactly the play, how we're going to do the play, what they need, <laughs> what Joshua got himself into. See that way? Okay, it should be at the end over here. And I'm really not doing a good job of looking for treasure chests. To be honest, I'm just kind of just following the road so we can get there with hopefully no, not really getting attacked. <coughs> Genus Royal Academy. Wow, so this is the Royal Academy. I like it here. It seems so nice and relaxing. Perfect type of environment for studying, I'd say. <laughs> well, everyone's in class at the moment. It'll get pretty noisy if you just wait around a little while. We're having the campus festival soon. Ah, so I guess people are busy preparing for it. Correct? I want to introduce you to the head of the student council, but she's in class. So, I'll take you to the dean's office first. Why there? To meet Dean Collins. He's in charge of the whole academy. Ah, uh, yeah, so we should probably meet up with him. His office is on the first floor of the main building, to the right. Got it. Well, let's go meet the dean then. All right. Arrived at Genius Royal Academy. First, let's meet with the Dean. 
His office is on the first floor. All right. Let's take a look around, though, before we uh before we do that. Boys dorm dormitory. This is a really nice place. Clubhouse. Hi. Genus lunch. Well, let's buy it so we know how to make it. <laughs> Alright. Vegetable sandwich, which we already know how to make. Classes are almost over. Should get flooded with hungry young students here shortly. That's a good bet. <laughs> Student council room. Oh, we know where it is now. Girls locker room. Some other room. Oh, marital activities. And here's the boys locker room. Everybody's in class. Okay. <clears throat> Well, I guess we should meet with the Dean, because it doesn't look like there's anything else going on. Schoolhouse. Hello. Pardon me, Fauna. I just got back. <laughs> Welcome back. If you're looking for the Dean, he just went to his office. Okay. Uh, humanities classroom. That's outside. Faculty office, Dean's office. Here we go. I'm back, Dean Collins. Ah, uh, hello, Chloe. And who might you be? It's nice to meet you, Dean. We're from the Bracer Guild. But you're so young. Very impressive indeed. Are you by any chance here because of the fire at the orphanage? Yes, actually. Explain the entire situation. I see. That's terrible. I wish I could do something to help. Well, first, there's the matter of cheering up the children. Perhaps I could start there. Yes, sir. In that case, I will work on the play with Estelle and Joshua. I think that's a good idea. Estelle and Joshua, I wish you both the best. Do what you can. Yes, sir. To the best of our meager ability. <laughs> uh. I'm letting the head of the student council handle the matter of the play. Her name is Jill. She can tell you far more about it than I ever could. I'll see about setting up dorm rooms for you. Dorms? Well, the campus festival is almost upon us. I'd imagine you, that you'll need to rehearse every day for long hours. And if that's the case, you'll need a place to sleep, will you not? Oh, okay. That would be greatly appreciated. Ah, lessons seem to have concluded for the day. Why not go and introduce yourselves to the president, then? Yes, sir. We should go to the student council room next. It's to the right of the main building, on the second floor of the clubhouse. Okay, let's go. We actually know where that's at, so... Oh, let's... Hi. And when the woodwinds group is late. Uh-oh. I wonder if I should just start getting ready on my own. Uh, part of the uh, band, I suppose. Setting up for the campus festival is such a pain. Not the people that want to be involved work on it. No, you help! Kick! <laughs> Alright. So busy. Budgets for all of the concession stands have been checked over. No problems with sending out the invitations. Now all that's left is the play. We can't find anyone to fill the last two rules. The only option might be for us to fill them in ourselves. Oh no! There's no way you're acting in the play! 
The horrors I witnessed when we first tried those costumes on are going to haunt me for the rest of my life. Toe, remind me. I never want to wear anything like that ever again. Oh boy. I'm back, Joe. Hello, Hans. Chloe? Heard about the fire. It must have been awful. Were the matron and kids alright? Yes, they're fine, for now. The orphanage was burnt to the ground, though. I see. Well, try to keep your spirits up. Fretting won't do anyone any good. Best thing we could do is make the play something the kids can enjoy. Yes, Matron Theresa gave us the same advice. So, we'll give it our best. And with your help, I'm sure everything will turn out fine. The thing I was stressing about it just a few minutes ago. Who are your friends? Nice to meet you. I'm My name's Estelle. I'm Joshua. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. So you must be the ones Chloe spoke up before. <laughs> I told you I'd bring them here. They'll be helping too. Oh, that's a relief. I'm glad to meet both of you. I'm Joe... Redoner? Redoner. I'm the head of the student council. I'll be directing the play. And I'm the vice president, Hans. Nice to meet you both. Likewise. Good to meet you too. Hmm, you know? What? With bracers here, maybe we can incorporate stunts. Well, yeah, they are combat trained, so... You any good with the sword, Estelle? That's actually a really good question. Well... My father mainly trained me on the staff, but I'm not hopeless, at least. I bet you have a natural, uh... A natural affinity for the sword. Okay, that settles it, then. You'll have a big sword fight with Chloe. Well, we do know Chloe is trained in sword fighting. I'm sure she could give Estelle some pointers. And Estelle's a natural fighter, so I see that working well, yes. Whoa, whoa, whoa! A sword fight? <clears throat> she means in the play, of course. There's a duel between the two knights at the climax of the play. It's a really powerful scene, perfect for the final act. We don't have any girls who could use a sword well enough to compete with Chloe, much less make it look good. She beat every guy in the fencing tournament and took the top spot. Okay, let's not uh, let's not discount Chloe's uh, sword skills then. <laughs> fencing is no joke. Oh wow! Yeah, it's really impressive. She actually beat out Hans in the final match. Oh, you just you just had to throw that jab in there, right? I just look at the face. Just had to throw that jab. Thanks for reminding me, Jill. <laughs> it's not that I'm no good. It's just that Chloe is way better. I I'm still only an amateur. Uh, I'm pretty sure, even if you consider yourself that. I don't think I'd be any match for a professional like Estelle. And again with the modesty. <laughs> yeah, Estelle has natural fighting and combat training, but I bet you'd hold your, hold your own pretty well. But hey, if you need my help, I'm your girl. We can do it, Chloe. I'm sure we can. Thank you. <laughs> you know, a duel between two free female knights ought to be pretty unique. Yeah, I agree with that. Female knights? They're going to be playing the two male knights. Oh no. Huh. Well. <laughs> my heartfelt sympathies go out to you, Joshua. Because I already see where this is going. Huh? But that leaves us without a role for Joshua. Oh my. Whatever shall we do. He deserves to play a crucial role in this. Yes, a crucial role. I think we may have just the part for him. Um, what kind of play is this exactly? It's called Mag Magridil Ma Magridil of the White Magnolia. It's a famous story set in a time where there are nobles and commoners. A princess is, is, is courted by both a knight of royal blood and a commoner. 
In spite of their different social classes, the three have been friends since childhood. As you can imagine, this leads to complications between the nobles and the commoners. And there's a great happy ending to the whole thing. Wink. Hey, that sounds like fun! <laughs> so then... Why are the girls playing the guy roles? It's just something to make the production more interesting this time. Having guys and girls switch roles, that is. <laughs> really? Wow, and the teachers are okay with this? In sexual discrimination, be free of gender roles. Put, put it in that light, the teachers loved the idea. Yes, it's all how you spit it. <laughs> Personally, I just thought people would get a kick out of it. <laughs> Joe, you're incorrigible. Yep. Though, she prefers the title, Evil Genius. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I'm totally up for this! Joshua, run now. Just do it. Yeah. Hey, hold on a second. From what you're telling me, then... The crucial role you need me to play is... Yep. You're really doing us a massive favor here. You owe me. That's, that's all I would be saying is Joshua. Whatever you're paying the guild, whatever. But you personally owe me a favor. Thank you for introducing us to such nice people, Clo. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, Joshua. So, these are our costumes? Oh, this will be priceless. <laughs> now, Joshua, you know, it, the whole ending said there's a great big happy ending. All we need is for, well, depending on how you want this to work out, you know, if Chloe's the one that ends up, quote, getting the girl, then, like, Joshua comes out ahead. Or either way from what we've seen, but it may be a little awkward, depending on how, like, Estelle feels. Anyway, I'm probably getting ahead of myself. I figured that if we played knights, we'd be all armored up. Well, armor and a helmet won't work so well when if people want to see you act. Huh, good point. That's why I decided to arrange things so you'd be dressed more like the rural guardsman. Smart. I got it. It's perfect for Chloe. She's petite. <laughs> Thank you so much. I think it suits you also. <laughs> really? Say, why are we dressed in different colors? Well, to show you're on different sides. Because I'm playing the Azure Knight, Oscar. You're playing the Ruby Knight, Julius. Oh, that sounds cool. It makes the play more colorful. Yeah, good plan. Oh, okay then. So, what about Joshua? The object of your affection is the fair Princess Cecilia. Come on, Princess. This way. Wait! I'm not in the moment yet! <laughs> Get into character. That's what I have to do. You know, with your hair down like that and everything, Joshua, not bad. <laughs> so is so so is the person that does the voice a voice acting for the ladies. So I'm laughing. <laughs> uh, huh. uh. If you're gonna say something, say it. Don't leave me in suspense. Well, how should I put it? <laughs> I think it looks perfect. I'm shocked. Yeah, I'm actually shocked. <laughs> you look beautiful. Indeed. Such poise. Yeah, be a true... If you're gonna... You know, and, and this, is, this is my stance. If you're gonna have to do it anyway, just go all the way. Get into character and do the best you absolutely can. 
<laughs> Why, if I didn't know what's really going on under there, I'd be smitten at the very sight of you. Hmm. Well, thank you for being so honest about it, at least. I'm not so thrilled, but... <laughs> this is just as I'd hoped. I think everyone would be pretty pleased with the casting. Yeah, I think they will be, too. Come on, everyone. Let's make this play one to remember. All right, yeah! Mm-hmm. <laughs> Afterward, Estelle and Joshua each slept in their respective dormitories. Okay, Estelle. Please use this bed. Thank you. But that means you and Jill are in the same room. You two must be close. <laughs> we have been, ever since we first started here. And as roommates, we're pretty much inseparable. By the way, I have a proposition for you. What? Want to be an honorary best friend of mine? After all, we're going to be working together. You don't mind, do you? <laughs> of course not. Not superseding me, I hope. Never. Oh. We're a best friend trio, right? Yeah, of course we are. My new best friends, Jill and Chloe. Wonderful. <laughs> Looks like it's just us girls in here. This'll be fun. No need to worry about boys prying eyes while we're here. <sighs> you make it sound so dirty. <sighs> You're so innocent. Like a little lamb. Oh, that's just mean. Just for that, I'm not baking you any sweets. Oh, well, pardon me. I apologize for offending you, Mademoiselle Clo. Nope. Try again. Hmm? What's wrong, Estelle? What's with all the staring? <laughs> it's no big deal. I've just got a little green monster on my shoulder. What do you mean? I have some friends back in Roland. But the most we ever did was have sleepovers. I think it must be nice to have someone close living under the same roof with you. What do you think, Chloe? I'm not sure. I don't really understand what would make you jealous, Estelle. Huh? I concur. I almost want to ask where you get off saying something like that. Why would you say that? Oh, come on. You got a traveling companion, don't you? Pretty nice looking one to boot. Who you've also, I don't know, lived under the same roof with? Uh, you talking about Joshua? <laughs> That's kind of a silly question. <laughs> you've got a hot guy with you all the time, and you're jealous of us living in an all-girl household? I'm playing a tiny violin for you, like, minuscule in size. <laughs> Shows what you know. Joshua's more like a big brother to me. Us living together is more like a family thing. Oh, a family thing, she says. Wonder if Joshua feels the same way. But I bet that's not what a guy his age would think. Gotta be tough for him to always be around a pretty girl like you. Uh, enough, Jill. I'm so sorry, Estelle. Jill has a bad habit of picking on people. But also on the right path? <clears throat> Maybe. Pfft, we're gonna start talking about bad habits. Is there something you'd like to say? Nope, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> come on, don't mess with me like that. And really, Joshua? I mean, come on. No way. <laughs> Someone's in denial. Jill! Oops, I just remembered. I have to give my daily report to the teacher before bed. So, good night, ladies. Sleep well. <sighs> I swear. Oh, right. Estelle? If you'd like, I can lend you some of my pajamas. Hmm. Ah, oh, now the wheels are really starting to turn. Estelle? Ah! Oh, right. Uh, pajamas. Sure, that sounds great. <laughs> God, maybe the the dense one is you know, <laughs> you know, getting it through her head. 
With that, Estelle and Joshua's unlikely life at the Royal Academy had begun. Sleepy time. Time to get up. Time to get up! <laughs> uh, and then still pass back. <laughs> in the morning, they would wake up and go to school. Just like the other students. Oh, wow. So it's like they would actually, like they were actually attending the, uh, the academy. <laughs> now, of course, Joshua is the good student. Everybody's like, yeah. <laughs> Super good student. All throughout the morning, they attended lessons with the other students. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> this is really cool. As the day wore on, lunch was enjoyed by all was enjoyed by all over pleasant, silly conversation, mostly revolving around how Joshua looked in heels. Might look in heels. <laughs> Poor Joshua. <laughs> School was followed by rigorous rehearsals that lasted late into the night. Everyone is having such fun that time seemed to fly by. And the day before the festival. My friend, I fear that this was inevitable. Perhaps fate always intended for us to meet in so base a fashion. Speak, that we may be both we me and I'm the one that butchers the lines. Speak that we may both be unburdened, if nothing else, for our beloved princess. We would cleave a path through fate with our own hands, but at this moment my words and her smiles seem lost. Has fear clutched your heart, Oscar? But what is this passion that pierces me to the quick? Though I have no wish to fight against you again, it would seem that I am left with little choice. Before this storm, by the name of revolution, should claim us both. Take up your sword, and we shall let fate decide! Yes, and may the goddess above see our spirits as they truly are! Come then! Let it be done! Indeed! Whew. Whew. Woohoo! Finally got through that scene with no mistakes! You're just rubbing it in now, Estelle. <laughs> <laughs> and a convincing performance it was. I hope that uh, I made it a convincing performance. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> I've got nothing on you, though. I don't think you've flubbed a single line. Well, I've been familiar with this script for a long time. I think I learned it at about the same rate you're going. <laughs> I really appreciate you taking the trouble to rehearse. It's no big deal. You've kind of been my guide through it all. I think you'd make a great bracer, personally. I think so, too. <laughs> you flatter me. Hint. And then it'll be filled up. We finally do this for real tomorrow. I hope Matron Theresa and the children will enjoy it. <laughs> they really mean a lot to you, don't they? They're like your family. Hmm. I'm sorry. Did I say something wrong? No. You're exactly right. They're the ones who taught me the real value of family. Both of my parents died shortly after I was born. What? I was left in the care of an affluent relative. I never wanted for anything. But I really had no idea what having a family was like. It was ten years ago that I met the matron. Ten years ago? 
<clears throat> was that during the Hundred Days War? Yes. That was when I came to ruin. Everyone I knew had scattered trying to escape the Imperial forces. Matron Theresa and her husband Joseph took me in and cared for me. Wow! After the war ended, we waited several months for word to come of my relatives. She and Joseph were so kind to me. That was when I first understood what it must be like to have a mother and father. And how it must be to have a family to be with. Chloe. I'm sorry. I've been rambling. <laughs> you must be bored to tears. No, not at all. Let's really show everyone tomorrow how it's done. Right. I was worried before, but I'm really excited now. Jill and Hans sure have worked hard on this, haven't they? <laughs> yes, indeed. But I think Joshua has really been the biggest help. I never expected him to be such a good actor. I could see that. Yeah, he acted all uninterested, but he sure plays the role of the spoiled princess well. <laughs> huh. He definitely nailed the mannerisms. I've seen professionals turn in worse performances. Uh, like I said, if you're going to have to do it, go 100%. Do it right. Does he have any experience in theater? Hmm. I don't really know much about his life before I met him. Whatever went on back then, he's never wanted to talk about it. Oh. I'm sorry. I don't mean to pry. <laughs> don't sweat it. He's always been the type to be good at whatever he does. He's always so calm and collected. Sometimes he gets flustered, though, and that's when he's really cute. <laughs> what? Perhaps our roles should have been reversed. Huh? Julius and Oscar. Somehow, I think you would have preferred to play Oscar. Uh, how come? Well, maybe. I mean, Julius is the son of a noble, and I sure don't know anything about that. No, oh, no. Uh, I get it. That's not what I mean. It's more about, um, you know, the ending. Oh, you mean how Oscar gets... R right. Well, it's just Joshua. Hey, do you mean you wouldn't like kissing Joshua? D don't be ridiculous. Still, it does seem rather risque. Oh, come on. C come on, you're starting to sound like Jill. And besides, Joshua just sees me like a little sister. <laughs> does he? He's always treating me like a little kid, especially when my dad's around. Drives me nuts. Anyway, there's absolutely nothing like that going on. Uh, okay. Ah, here you are. J Joshua? Hans? Rehearsal's over and you're still practicing. That's some dedication you two have. Ready for the big duel scene? J just leave it to us. It'll be flawless. Really? I look forward to seeing it. Anyway, what are you two doing here? Were you looking for us? Yeah, today's the last day that you two will be staying with us in the dorms, right? I was thinking we could have a big dinner to pump ourselves up. Hmm, maybe. Yeah, let's do it. I think it sounds like a great idea. By the way, wasn't Jill with you? She was called away by the Dean some time ago. I'll go check on her. I'll come with you. You guys could go on ahead to the cafeteria. Okay. Let's go to the cafeteria. As you wish, boss. Don't call me that. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like they've really hit it off. Sometimes it worries me that he doesn't let people get close. <laughs> what? Oh, it's nothing. I think you just got your answer to what you were talking about before, Estelle. How he just treats you like a little sister and etc, etc. Okay, let's go get changed. 
it'd be kind of embarrassing to walk around like this. I have to agree. <laughs> that should do it. Wanna go meet up with Jill? Alright, let's go to the Deed's office. <clears throat> and we have the uh, two ladies of the group. Shopping Rose this year? <laughs> this is so far been my favorite favorite thing this game has thrown at me so far. This is, it's different, it's unique, you're getting a lot of really getting into the uh, characters, you know, learning a little more kind of background and getting more into their emotions about things. Uh, I don't know, this, this part has been done extremely well so far. It's provided some laughs, some really in-deep thought, uh, getting more into Estelle and Joshua's uh, relationship a little bit. Sounds like uh, Joshua is going to get with uh, Chloe at the end. So depending on what Joshua's true feelings are, it could be good or great. He doesn't lose either way in my opinion. Of course, I'm more partial to Chloe, but that's just me. Just this this whole part, uh, I'm really enjoying it so far. Uh, I just I, I like the character interactions. This is the kind of the first time. Trying to think of the best way to put this. That the episode flew by. Like, looking at the time, we're almost g getting close to 37 minutes into the episode. And, or maybe a little over 37 minutes. It's, it's the first time the episode has completely flew by. That the dialogue didn't feel forced. That's kind of a strong word to use. But this felt so natural and just, you know, having... You know, the little bit of, of, of the Academy lifestyle being shown. And them working on the lines. And just having them kind of talk back and forth. Estelle and uh, and Chloe. And you get a little bit of little bit of that. And having, having the laughter. I don't know. It just all feels like it was done extremely well. And I... <coughs> excuse me. Although it, it has killed my throat. So kudos to whoever... Uh, kudos to... Style, st steel, style. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. You called it. That did indeed uh, kill my throat a little bit. Kudos to you. Thank you for the comments. I really appreciate them. And hopefully you'll comment. Let me know how my, my uh, performance was on stage, other than butchering the the first line. That's completely on me, or the first kind of Estelle's first line. Other than that, the emotion. Again. I should take my own advice. If you're gonna do it right, if you're gonna do it, try to do it right. And throw all the emotion and stuff in there. So I do hope you enjoy that. And I wanted to point it out because it is something I that I think about and care about. I try to show the when there's a play going on and they're acting as care in character, I'm gonna try to act as they would acting. That may sound confusing. You know what I'm getting at. This part seems so very well done up to this point, and I hope it continues this way. Until the next episode, I'm Cinder9. Remember to shoot for the stars, and take care, everyone.